Well, Astro Harry fans, welcome to part two of my Planet Killer video. And as you can see, it's absolutely glorious. It's 22 degrees at the moment. Um, and the skies are a lovely azure colour, which is always a good sign. So I think we're in for a good night of, uh, um, of astronomy. My only slight concern is it might get a bit foggy, a bit hazy. But that's because I live near the sea. But apart from that, it should be fine. So let's see what we can do with the new beast. And let's see how it performs. I will be honest, I've already had it out once. But I only had it out for a little bit. So I've already gone through a couple of other things. But I'll repeat the steps tonight. So at least you know <laughs> that you can see what I'm going through. But let's see how the Brezza does. And let's see how the sky does. So as you can see, the telescope fits perfectly onto the SLT mount without any adjustments at all, which is good news. And it's often easy to do this, but up goes up, down goes down. It's often easy with these mounts to put the telescope on upside down. Been there, done that. So that's the good thing. The only problem is, is the finder scope's on the sort of at a funny angle, but we'll deal with that. So this is it with the eyepiece in and the finder scope in. Um, pretty simple to use and I don't know if I can show you. We should see a bit of a tree. There we go. Well, you got it for about a second. There you are. So all good. Now, as you can see with the red dot, I'll try and put it against something black. No matter if I move the camera around, the red dot stays in the same place on the Celestron finder. And if I do the same thing with our friend from uh, Breza, when I move the camera around, as you can see, that red dot is moving about a lot more and it seems to be missing some sort of secondary optics. So for now, I'm afraid this is just trash. There's a way I can get around it. And I also may be able to cannibalize. Um, I've got a couple of these, so I may be able to cannibalize one and do something with it. But as you see, that stays perfectly still. I mean, it moves because I move, but that's dot staying still. Whereas with the with the Brezza, that dot's moving all over the place. So let's see what we can do about that. So I'm here out, my first night, got all the gear. So let's see how this goes. How exciting. So I've got everything set up. Um, so that's my telescope, it's on my mount, uh, and I've got it connected to the laptop. And uh, I believe I have a moon. Let's just let's see if I can just capture this with my uh, my camera. So yes, there's definitely a moon in there. Um, as you can see, there's loads of trees in the way. But yeah, so far so good. Let's crack on. So I've got my Astro Cam set up inside the telescope and it's capturing images and as you can see there's the moon so that has gone really well nice and slick um absolutely no issues whatsoever this has been brilliant so far so there we go that's the moon let's try and see if we can do some other objects and get the scope aligned as well so i've got the astro cam on and obviously it's out of focus the first thing you'll notice is how you get a, a pure ring with the, the newts, you get all these sort of effects. So that's quite nice. So I'm just gonna have a go at zooming this, uh, of focusing this. I've got it set to a really high gain, so that's not gonna be brilliant. So just get the, uh, get it done. So I've got some there so we can sort of see Jupiter and some moons. And then let's step back the exposure. Let's get it to 15th of a second. And then let's get the gain down. So you can see there's a bit of fuzziness and that's not the optics. That is because of the um, the, the, the weather that we're having today. <laughs> so um, with a lot of high clouds and everything else like that. So that's cool. Um, I also need to get Ask Consorted because I had a bit of a disaster. But that's not your problem, an IT disaster. So there we go. So there's our sort of image of Jupiter. As you can see it's quite grainy um, so I'm going to uh, reduce the gain. Yeah, that's a bit better isn't it? So that's not a bad um, that's not a bad image at all of Jupiter for, for what I'm used to but as I say the seeing is awful. It's very um, misty, murky 
whatever you want to call it. So, um, so I'm going to go with that and say I'm quite okay with that. I'm going to 100% it just to give you a chance to have a, a decent view. Let's just crack it over to the right hand side. So, um, so yeah, um, <laughs> through the eyepiece it looks so much better. But um, you know, what can you do? What can you do when the when the scene's horrible and it's all misty and everything else like that? Um, I'm just going to knock the gain down a bit as well. Yeah, let's see if that makes any difference, and of course it doesn't. So <laughs> you do what you can. So 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 far so good. I think I probably need to have a a proper clear night to do this with, so that you guys can have a have a really good look at this because um, through the eyepiece. It just looks amazing, but with all the sort of cloud and everything, bit of a problem. So I've uh, adjusted a few settings, um, which would make it a little bit clearer. And as you can see, that's our Jupiter. So this is just native. There's, there's no Barlow's, there's no fancy stuff going on. I've just used the cropped area just to increase the frame rate and make it. And as you can see, that's a really nice, um, that's a really nice Jupiter that so uh, I'm more than, oops, let's get the focus right. I'm more than happy with that. That's, uh, that's a really sort of good image. As I say, the weather's not brilliant tonight, so it's never going to be 100%, but uh, that's cool. What I will do is I will do a, so this is 640 by 480. I will do a comparison with the 130, with the uh, Celestron 130, so you can sort of get an idea of the, um, the sort of difference in scale and size and quality and everything like that bro so here's the uh, composite of the object jupiter through the two different telescopes so on the left is the 127 and then on the right is my celestron slt 130 and you can clearly see a difference in scale uh, a major major difference so as far as planet killing concerns that's tick um as, I, as i've said a couple of times the scene was pretty poor so um you know you're not going to get much detail but here's a couple of images that have been cleaned up um this was native just through straight through the astro cam and then i did a second image where i'd um cleaned it up a little bit and i'd use the two times barlow which is to so say you can see some detail and then this final image was using a five times barlow which is complete and utter overkill but i managed to capture the uh, the shadow of europa the top right hand corner so yeah i did some uh, dso's as well um this is the best of it m57 ring nebula uh, and then i tried to do neptune no dice <laughs> there's no neptune there it's just a blob but then i did saturn saturn's pretty small now so um that looks that looks okay so it's definitely ticking a lot of boxes when it comes to planets so hi telescope fans and isn't it amazing how things change so i recorded that video at the end of september and it is now the beginning of december and i can tell you it's not 22 degrees today <laughs> it's about minus four so it's just funny how these things happen so we've got our telescope and i just thought i'd do a little bit of a conclusion video so um the, the whole object of this was to find a budget uh cheap planet killing telescope something that was specifically just to get it, like jupiter mars saturn etc and it definitely ticks all those boxes for that on the positives, optically, it is superb, especially when you look through the eyepiece. Um, the AstroCam pictures that I did just didn't do it any justice. When you look through the eyepiece, it is so clean and crisp and clear. And, you know, you can see everything that you'd ever want to see on Jupiter and Saturn. It's, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, and the, the, the scope itself is well built. It's relatively lightweight. Um, it's, there's no fuss about it at all. I think from the negative point of view, um, the focus really lets it down. The, the focus just has a little knob and, you know, when you want to do fine tuning, especially when you want to do astrophotography, it's really sort of um, going to be hard work. I did a little look and you can do upgrades and things, but the upgrades are about 50% of the cost of the telescope. So maybe if you're going to spend that money, there may just be better telescopes out there that automatically come with the, the focus. So that's something that I'm going to have a look at. There may be some little tricks that I can do, but you've just got this tiny sort of 15 millimeter bolt that you use focusing and you need something a lot more sophisticated than that. So that's the sort of negative for me. So if I was going to give it a score, I'd probably give it seven out of 10. Um, I think it'd be a brilliant little telescope, especially if you're into the optical side of things. Um, this is a great little telescope. You'll have a lot of fun with it. For the astrophotography, I guess I need to do a bit more experimenting and see what um, see what we can do. But um, it's for me, I think I, I can't wait. And 
the good thing is at the moment that um, Jupiter's still nice and bright, so I can go and do some more stuff with Jupiter. And then it won't be long before Mars comes back and Venus is up and so on and so forth. So it'll definitely get plenty of use. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I recommend the telescope for what it is. Uh, I just would caveat that, as I say, with the, with the issue with the focuser. And maybe, um, you know, if I can find a hack, if I can find a different way of addressing focus, then, um, you know, put it on the Astro Harry channel. Thank you very much for watching.